Professor Dave and Chegg here. As we are preparing to learn about all kinds of organic reactions, we are going to have to learn some important conventions for depicting mechanisms, which show us the way that a reaction occurs. Let's talk a bit about mechanisms and how we represent them. Again, a mechanism is a depiction of a chemical reaction with every step shown. A chemical reaction, without exception, involves the breaking of at least one chemical bond, or the formation of at least one chemical bond, and usually several of both. So with a mechanism, the idea is to see every interaction between atoms, every movement of electron density, every bond broken, and every bond formed. We are showing precisely what happens in a chemical reaction step by step. In order to do this, we need some symbols, and the most important one will be electron pushing arrows. These always start at electron density and point in the direction that the electron density moves, so they always go from electron rich to electron poor. Let's see how this works, starting simply with examples of bonds breaking. Most of the time, bonds break heterolytically, meaning both of the electrons in a bond stay with one of the two atoms participating in the bond. In such a case, we would use a normal curved arrow, which denotes the motion of two electrons, and it will go from the bond itself, which is the electron density, to the atom that is keeping the electrons, resulting in a cation and an anion. The more polar a bond, the more likely it is for heterolysis to occur. Sometimes bonds will break homolytically. This means that each of the two atoms participating in the bond keeps one electron. Since normal arrows represent two electrons, to represent the motion of one electron, we will use a single-headed arrow like this. One will go from the bond to one atom, and another will go from the bond to the other atom. This results in two radicals, which are species with unpaired electrons, which we will talk about later. If we want to show bond formation, we just do the reverse of what we just talked about. One atom can attack another, shown here by this lone pair on the anion attacking the cation, and we form a covalent bond. Similarly, two radicals can react, and a single-headed arrow will go from each unpaired electron to some region of space between them, denoting that a bond is being formed there. Although radical reactions are important to understand, it will be the case that most of the reactions we examine will involve exclusively heterolytic bond cleavage and regular arrows. In a mechanism, there could be many arrows per step, and many steps, if a lot of chemistry happens over the course of a reaction. But all of this will be more clear as we begin to learn some different reactions. Professor Dave for Chegg, see you next time.